What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of my favorite features inside of the SketchUp extension, Sketch Plus. Plus, we're going to talk about a couple new tools that have been added to the newest version of Sketch Plus. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so note that Sketch Plus is currently on sale as a part of their uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. So you can currently get 40% off this or the other Mindsight Studios extensions as well. So um, like Profile Builder or Placemaker, uh, some of those other tools, you can get those off 40% off with the code BLACKCYBER22. You can find links to all of this on my Black Friday page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. But specifically in this one, I wanted to talk a little bit about Sketch Plus. And so we've talked about Sketch Plus in the past. It's a collection of tools that um, basically do things that SketchUp doesn't normally do, um, but that can be really helpful. So we've got everything from tools for quickly changing the axes of your models, right? So you can click on this and set your axes wherever you want them to go. Um, we've got smart arrays and path arrays. We'll talk about some of these in a little bit. Um, first off though, I wanted to check out a couple of the new tools that they've added in this version. So the first is a wall tool. And basically the way that this works is you just click on it and um, it gives you the profile of a wall. And then um, you can set the width and the height by typing. So say I wanted this to be like an eight inch wall. I could do eight inch comma 12 foot, something like that. Notice how that changes the size of the wall profile, but then you just click and you can move your mouse and you can draw like this. So what it does is it allows you to really quickly create those wall profiles. Um, it generates them as a group as well. Um, and then if you do create a wall, it's going to automatically close everything in. So for example, let's say that I did something like this. Notice how it kind of like highlights over that wall. And if I click and close this, this is going to close this wall in. Now this is somewhat similar to the wall tool in a thousand and one bit tools, but it's a lot better. So that one, so that one, for example, allows you to set your wall alignment, your thickness, and your height. And then you can click on the build wall function, but it doesn't really give you the ability to like lock on axes or anything like that. Plus the preview of it isn't necessarily all that good. Um, it does automatically close this in. So it's kind of similar, but I like it better specifically because it gives me the ability to inference and lock along the axes. Um, plus when you have this open, you can tap the control key and you can set if this is placed on the left, right or middle um, location in here. And so one cool thing about this is let's say that we were to draw this wall like this. We'll go ahead and close it in right here. But notice how if you mouse over these walls, it's actually going to lock to them and recognize them, meaning that you can use this to add walls like an interior in here like this. And again, one thing I like about this is it gives you the ability to lock to an axis. So you can use your arrow keys in order to do that. The 1001 bit tools tool did not allow you to do that. And it really didn't allow you to inference either. So in my opinion, this is a much better tool than that one. So we've got the new wall tool. We've also got a pipe tool, which I actually really like. Um, what it does is you can click on the pipe tool and it gives you the ability to um, type in both a diameter and also a bend radius. So if you know what your bend radius is going to be, you can type that in. But let's say I did six inches comma six inches like this. And then I use the pipe tool. What it's gonna do is it's gonna generate a pipe and it's gonna automatically generate those curves of that pipe like this. So notice how I can use this to create a pipe that turns this way, this way, this way. So it's just a really fast way to generate pipes. Um, I could see this being really helpful for a lot of different things. So I'm thinking like plumbing systems or mechanical systems or anything like that. So this is definitely a cool tool. Um, and I think it's a good addition to the overall tool set. So thinking about these tools, it would be nice to have something built in that actually cuts openings in these walls. So like doors and windows, things like that. I know there's something like that in Profile Builder, but if we're gonna be adding building tools to Sketch Plus, it would be nice to see something like that in this tool set. I think that would make a lot of sense. I like the piping tool. It would be nice to see something that kind of like pushes that along a path, but I like the way that that works. I think it's a cool tool. And so while we're here, I did want to highlight just a couple of the other tools inside of uh, Sketch Plus that I really like. So for example, we've got tools in here for randomizing rotation and scale of objects. So if I was to come in here and select all of these trees, for example, and then I was to select the random scale, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to scale an object. And notice how I can type in the minimum and the maximum like this, but then I can just click. And what it's going to do is it's going to randomize that scale. And notice how I can click multiple different times in order to re-randomize this. So if you don't like the way that it works the first time, you can adjust this again and again. So in addition 
It also gives you the ability to randomize the rotation. So you can click in here and notice how this is going to randomize the spin of your objects like this. So for randomizing and creating like forests or something like that, this can be a really good tool for that. So there is also a tool in here that you can use to randomize the position. I don't know that I necessarily see myself doing that quite as much, um, but it is in there if you do want to use it. So there's also a tool in here for replacing components like this. So I can select a number of different components. And then I can click on the option for replace component right here, and it's going to replace this. Now notice how we have a problem because this tree's axis location is in the corner instead of in the middle. So that's a little bit problematic but there's a tool built in that allows us to set the axis location. Um, and so this is gonna give us a number of preset axis locations. So I'm gonna click right here in order to adjust that. Well now, if we were to do that replacement like this, note that these will get placed in the proper location because the axis location is in the right place. So this is an easy way to swap these out. Now note that there is the ability inside of the components section of your tray in order to do this as well. So if I was to select a number of these different trees, right, like this, then I could come in here and find my in model. I could go down and I could find my tree and I can click on the replace selected. So that's definitely an option as well. This is just a little bit faster because it does allow you to just use something in your viewport instead of you having to like scroll through this giant list right here. So again, um, I like having that just kind of exposed right here and ready to go. Um, but if you do want to do it the slightly longer way, that, uh, that option is built into SketchUp as well. Um, one, one of the sections that I think is really powerful is the materials section of Sketch Plus. And so what this does is this allows you to really get into like grouped and nested components and start changing materials. So first off, there's the option for unpaint all. And so what that would do is that would remove all of the materials from an object when you click on it. So if you did want to just start over, um, that's definitely a valuable tool to have. And so it's also got two useful tools in here, the unpaint groups and components and unpaint faces and edges. So if you've ever had a situation like this one, right, where you have a box and then you've got like a raw face in here that has one material applied to it, but then it's in a group when we've got other materials applied to it as well, this can just get really tricky, right? Because the faces always govern. So if you apply this to the outside of a group, then um, the face is going to show through. So if you wanted the group to govern, what you could do is you could come in here and you could unpaint all faces and edges of an object. Notice how then um, this whole thing is going to show through. Alternatively, if you wanted your group to not have a material applied to it, you could use the unpaint groups and components. Um, so it really kind of depends on what you're um, trying to do, but I've had models in there before where some have groups painted, some have faces painted, other things like that. And it just, it's kind of a pain. So this gives you the ability to adjust that really easily. So in addition, there's also a tool in here called deep paint faces. And so what deep paint faces is going to do is it's going to allow you to paint a face no matter if it's in a group or not, right? Because notice how this whole thing is like three groups deep. So going in there in order to paint that could be kind of a pain. Um, if you use deep paint faces though, you can come in here and you can apply those new colors to this really easily. So let's say I wanted to apply like a red color to this, right? I could use deep paint faces um, in order to do that. And you could do a shift meaning you paint all matching, or you could also do a control in order to paint all matching adjacent. But notice how I was able to come in here and I was able to paint these faces without having to actually click into the groups at all. All right, so I'm gonna end this video with a tool that I would like to see added. So we talked a little bit about the random position. So the way the random position works, right? You click in here and then you pick a point and then you move your mouse in order to set the width. So it's like the box that this goes in, right? Like this. And you can use this in order to set um, how you want these to be placed. My problem with this one is it places objects that you already have in here. I guess it's not really a problem. It's just that I would like to have the ability to select a couple objects and then have it set this box and then randomly place copies of those objects in this location. So it would be somewhat like the Lumion um, linear place tool where it's actually randomly creating copies of objects. So instead of me having to create all of the objects and place them and then randomly move them, having it just randomly do that based on a couple objects that I select. So um, maybe that's something that can be added in the future. I don't know, but I think it would be cool to see.
Um, remember that Sketch Plus is currently um, doing their Black Friday sale, so make sure you use that code BLACKCYBER22 um, in order to save 40%. I'll link to that on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.